Have you noticed that not one of us look the same? Even if we are all from the same species? Thank goodness! <laughs> this is the same for other species, right? Example, the patterns on cheetahs are all unique, as well as the stripes on zebras, which makes it possible to distinguish between individual animals. Now children, variation in the same species is brought about by different factors. So in this video, we will be describing how different factors bring about genetic variation within a species. So we have discovered that the individual organisms making up any one species are not identical. So how do the differences in appearance occur? What are the contributing factors to this variation? The answer is mutations. What are mutations? Mutations involve a change to the structure of a gene. And if there's a change in the structure of a gene, what does it lead to? Very good. It leads to an altered or a changed genotype, meaning there'll be a change in the person's or the species' genetic material, genetic makeup, resulting in a different or altered or changed phenotype, meaning resulting in the change of the individual's or the species physical appearance. So a mutation is any change in the structure or the amount of DNA in an organism. So mutations are the underlying source of all variation. Why? Because they produce new forms or alleles of the gene which can be reshuffled in sexual reproduction. How does this happen? It can happen in different ways. This variation can be a result of meiosis during crossing over or during the random arrangement of chromosomes or during the random fertilization of gametes. Let's first take a look at how this variation occurs because of crossing over. Do you remember what happens during prophase 1 of meiosis? Very good! During prophase 1 of meiosis, there is an exchange of chromatid segments. Between what? Between the homologous chromosomes. And when meiosis is complete, what happened? New combinations of genetic material resulted in the gametes, making them different from each other. So that is how crossing over contributed to variation. What else happened during meiosis that could result in variation? Yes, the random arrangement of chromosomes. When did that happen? Do you remember the chromosomes arranging randomly at the equator during metaphase 1 and metaphase 2? And then what happened? As a result, during anaphase 1 or anaphase 2, the chromosomes or the chromatids started to move to the poles in different combinations. And this led to gametes that differ from each other. And that is how random arrangement of chromosomes during meiosis contributed to variation. Another contributing factor that occurred during meiosis will be the random fertilization of gametes. Firstly, what happened? The egg cells and the sperm cells produced by meiosis are different from each other, okay? Since there is random fertilization of these different gametes, what's going to happen? There will be different combinations of genetic material in the offspring. So random fertilization of gametes also contribute to 
variation within a species. Now, these variations in the individuals that make up a species may either be discontinuous or continuous. What is the difference? In continuous variation, there are a range of different phenotypes for a particular characteristic. For example, if we take height as an example of a characteristic, we will find that there is a complete range of measurements, right? From one extreme to the other. Whereas in discontinuous variation, there is no range of different phenotypes for a particular characteristic. The characteristic is either present or not. I hope you enjoyed our video. Like and subscribe.